Now let's discuss different types of market structures. First, there's perfect competition. This is a market where there are many buyers and sellers of a product and no single buyer or seller is powerful enough to affect the price of that product. The best example of perfect competition is agricultural products like cranberries or hazelnuts or corn. One farmer cannot affect the price of, let's say, corn by himself. If Just think about if you go to Fred Meyers and you're, you want to buy a bag of frozen corn and there's a there's a bag for 250 and then there's one for 15.95 most likely uh, that farmer is not going to get you to pay 15.95 for a bag of corn when you go to when you go to the supermarket you can be pretty sure that uh, apples are going to be right around the same price at, um, from one producer is from another and although prices may vary a little bit nationwide um, you know what you p would pay for bananas up here in Alaska is pretty much the same what you would pay in other parts of the nation. Pure monopoly is when uh, there's a market situation when where there's a single seller in a market for a particular good or service. Monopolies are illegal unless it's regulated by the government and examples uh, of government regulated monopolies are electricity or natural gas but other businesses that have monopolies on certain products are just think about Polaroid Instamatic cameras um, they have a patent on those Instamatic cameras so when Kodak tried to uh, develop an Instamatic uh, camera they, Polaroid actually sued Kodak so they have a monopoly on that item uh, De Beers for the most part has uh, has a pretty good monopoly going on diamonds. Microsoft, as you knew, tried to uh, ha have a monopoly of sorts on software. Several years ago, the government stepped in to uh, break up the oil industry, trying to have a monopoly on, on oil and the price of oil. Monopolistic competition. Now, don't let this name fool you. What this means is that there are several businesses that sell really similar products. For example, um, if you're familiar with the clothing industry, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, Polo Ralph Lauren, Liz Claiborne, Donna Karen, they sell clothing that are very similar as far as quality and price, but they definitely try to make their products different from each other. Um, think about Pizza Hut and Domino's. They offer pretty similar products if you think about it, but they try and make themselves very different from each other, right? Pizza Hut would never advertise their pizza just like Domino's does. Pizza Hut says that they use natural cheese, whereas Domino's really pushes the idea that they deliver within 30 minutes. Um, also within monopolistic competition, sometimes products are very similar in price. Like DVD players, kind of they run they run the gamut a little bit, but you can find DVD players that are pretty similar in price, and so you, that's when you have to you know research which is the best uh, product for your money. But sometimes prices drastically vary. For example, if you've heard of Tiffany's and Company, they sell a lot of silver jewelry, and so whereas you go to Fred Meyer's and pick up a silver bracelet for seven dollars Tiffany and company will sell a similar bracelet for over a hundred dollars companies use competitive differentiation and what this means is that every company tries to offer something better or different than their competitors for example think about Mercedes-Benz what did they try and offer in a vehicle that other vehicles just can't offer it well it's service it's a, a vehicle that's highly dependable and very safe to drive L.L. Bean they sell a lot of outdoor gear and clothing they try to differentiate themselves by excellent catalog and internet service and high quality products uh, Starbucks just take a minute to think about how does Starbucks try and set themselves apart from other coffee makers because um, they're obviously very successful at it. So a lot of companies use competitive differentiation to convince the consumer that even though they may offer a product that's very similar to someone else's, theirs is better. An oligopoly is when there are just a few businesses that make up an entire industry. For example, they're usually businesses that take a lot of money to start and operate. 
just think about how many people can make aircraft. There are just a few, like Boeing and McDonnell Douglas, right? You don't, um, probably you don't have a friend who has a aircraft making business. Or just think about uh, how many businesses would, would be able to get into ship ma making. How many people are really capable of making cruise liners um, like uh, Princess Cruise Ships. So oligopoly refers to businesses that there, there are very, there's very limited competition. There is some competition, but it's very limited because it takes a lot of money to operate these businesses. If you're a visual learner, hopefully this will uh, help you out a little bit. Here, here's kind of the visual. If you can picture each of these dots are businesses. These are examples of what perfect competition, monopolistic, pure monopoly, and oligopoly would look like. Uh, for perfect competition, an example would be apple growers or farmers growing corn. There's uh, several different suppliers and not one of them uh, can really influence the prices of good, goods. With monopolistic competition, just think about um, uh, all the different makers of uh, outdoor clothing, like winter clothing, clothing. So within monopolistic competition, there's not just one or two people that make clothing, but there's several different ones with, with prices really varying. For example, there's North Face, Patagonia, Columbia, Carhartt. Um, with pure monopoly, there's just one maker or supplier of a good or service, like Polaroid or De Beers, or public utilities like gas and water. And with an oligopoly, um, there are just a few suppliers or makers of goods, like ship makers or large plane suppliers. Here are some trends that we see happening in economics. As far as the microeconomic picture, businesses are trying to deliver high value and quality. They want to create long-term relationships and create a real competitive workforce. Uh, if you look at the covers of Forbes or Fortune magazines, the really hot companies are those companies that have figured out that they have to treat the customer really well. They know that it's a lot cheaper to maintain a customer than to try and, and uh, bring in a new customer through expensive advertising. With macroeconomics, Nations that were formerly uh, command economies or under communism are becoming more entrepreneurial. They're turning to capitalism.